few other terms we need to know. One term is amplitude. The symbol for that is capital A. And amplitude is the distance or angle difference or some other difference from the equilibrium point, which again is very often the midpoint, to the maximum displacement. So let's take a look at what the amplitude is for our demonstration pendulum in that simulation. For this pendulum right here, we set the amplitude, the maximum displacement from the equilibrium point as 15 degrees. That's a 15 degree amplitude. We could have an amplitude of something else like 10 degrees. In fact, that would be probably preferable for our experiment because that would be closer to a true simple harmonic motion. Even better would be five degrees or one degree, but it's just kind of hard to measure uh, you know, when it gets where it's going. Uh, because the amplitude's so small. But uh, nonetheless, amplitude is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium point. So we had that set at 15 degrees. The amplitude of a standing wave on a snaky spring, well, here's an example of a standing wave, and we'll talk more about this later, and let's measure the amplitude of that right now. Well, first we've gotta figure out the midpoint or equilibrium point. Well, that's going to be right in the middle, right about here. The next thing we have to do is measure to the maximum displacement because sometimes you don't know exactly where the equilibrium point is, and that certainly is the case here. In real life, we don't know exactly where that line is. Sometimes it's easier to measure from the maximum displacement on one side to the maximum displacement on the other side, which is what we'll do right here, and that's about 0.8 meters. So we can tell that the amplitude of this wave is guess it, if you said 0.4 meters, you'd be right. So we'll record 0.4 meters for the amplitude of the standing wave on our snaky spring. Notice in this case, we're measuring the amplitude in meters, whereas for our pendulum, we measured it in degrees. You could also measure amplitude in pounds per square inch or newtons per square meter. That's pressure units if we're measuring the amplitude of a sound wave. Next concept is that of forced vibration. That is when an object is made to vibrate by another nearby vibrating object. For example, I've got this tuning fork right here, and it's probably pretty hard for you to hear that. I'll put it really close to the microphone. You may be able to hear that, but what I can do is I can force a much bigger object to vibrate at that frequency, and then we'll all be able to hear it. I'm gonna put it up here against the wall. And hopefully you can hear that without even being close to the microphone, that is very audible for all of us. You can get many different objects to vibrate. I can get this table to vibrate. I can get the whole microphone to vibrate. Uh, but what you're doing is just forcing something to vibrate. Now, a related concept is resonance frequency. Resonant frequency or resonance frequency or natural frequency. It is the frequency at which an object naturally vibrates when displaced from equilibrium and then released. So with this live pendulum right here, we're going to demonstrate both the forced vibration and the resonant frequency. So first of all, let's check out the resonant frequency. If I displace this from its equilibrium point and just release it, it starts oscillating, it starts vibrating. And this is the natural frequency of this pendulum for this given length. I can change that by changing the length of the string uh, or by going to a different planet. It's easier to change the length of the string. But this is the frequency it will always vibrate at if it's at this given length on this given planet. Now, I can also cause this to go at some forced vibration, any frequency I want. For example, this, one and two and three and four and five. Now that's a forced vibration. As soon as I stop forcing it to go at that frequency, it goes back to its old frequency, its natural frequency or its resonant frequency. Now, with this, I can also demonstrate uh, how if I increase, if I keep uh, uh, giving it energy uh, at the right frequency, at its resonance frequency, I can cause the amplitude to get very large. So watch this. I'm just going to give it a little push, but if I do it at the exact right frequency, notice what's happening to the amplitude. It's getting bigger and bigger 
and bigger, and this can get actually catastrophically big where it starts damaging things, and I don't want to damage anything in here, so I'm just going to stop right there. Now, if you continually energize something at its resonance frequency, the amplitude of the vibration of the system may continue to increase catastrophically. One example of this is the famous Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapse, which occurred in November of 1940. It was a windy day, but it wasn't the windiest day that had happened that year. Nevertheless, something about the wind, it could have been possibly the frequency, caused the Tacoma Narrows Bridge to start resonating. And as the wind continued, probably pulsing at the resonance frequency, the amplitude of the standing wave got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it got so big, in fact, that the destruction of the bridge ensued. Luckily, no people were killed in this disaster. But we did learn a lot about engineering and how to engineer bridges properly. So you got to be careful with resonance uh, because you can actually get things to be damaged. Now one example of resonance that we're going to see is this one right here. Using a tuning fork and a graduated cylinder. Filled with water up to about this point right here. And so you can see it better. I will mark the water fill line with this rubber band right about there. And uh, so you can see the water moving around in there. But uh, there's also a tube in here. And what this does, this setup allows us to create a, uh, a tube of air that's different length. So I can adjust the length of the tube of air. And as we'll see, uh, resonance occurs when something is caused to vibrate at its natural frequency. Much like a trombone, you are changing the length of the vibrating tube of air. And only certain frequencies will resonate with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this on my shoe. You should never hit any tuning fork on anything harder than your shoe because you can damage it and you have to buy a new one. These are like 12 bucks or more. So only hit it on your shoe. Can't hear it now. But as soon as I get that the exact right length, it starts to resonate. Any shorter it doesn't, any longer it doesn't. But at the exact right length, it does. Here's another cool demo of resonance. What I have here are two tuning forks connected to wooden boxes so that each one forces vibration. This one forces the vibration of this box. This one forces the vibration of this box. But they're tuned to different frequencies. So when I hit this one, notice that this one's not vibrating. However, if I tune these so that they are tuned to the same resonance frequency, like they are now, notice that this one's not vibrating. But I'm going to hit this one, let go of this one, stop this one. This one's still vibrating. That's because I've gotten this one to resonate at the same, they're both at the same resonance frequency. Hence, by energizing this one at its resonance frequency, the amplitude will continue to increase until it's vibrating on its own.